Hey everyone, Tactics here, and in this video I'll be concluding my series on important mythic plus abilities, looking at big tank busters, notable bleeds, as well as any frontal cones. This video is definitely a bit more targeted towards healer and tank players to help them be aware of the more dangerous packs and dungeons, but it definitely still has some applications for DPS to make you more aware of various frontal abilities that may get you killed, or so you're prepared to help your tank kite from scary stacking bleeds. If you're interested in the rest of this series where I look at things like important interrupts and dispels, you can find it linked in the description below or on my channel. With that said, if you guys learned something, please make sure to like and subscribe to be notified when I post more Warcraft content, and let's begin with Plaguefall. Starting off, we move into Globgrog's room, where you have a couple Plague Belchers which have an ability called Belch Plague, which is just a frontal cone on the tank that everyone including the tank can sidestep, so make sure you avoid that. Similarly, Glomgrog has Slime Wave, which is on a random player instead of on the tank, and again, it is dodgeable, so make sure you move out of it when it targets you. Moving past him, we have the Blighted Spinebreakers, which have Festering Belch, another frontal cone targeted on the tank that is, again, dodgeable. Similarly, Wing Buffet is on the tank and is dodgeable, and if you get hit by this one, it is a massive knockback, so make sure you are sidestepping it. Plague Rock also has a big tank hit in Blightbeak, which we discussed briefly in the Dispel video, but basically it's a big physical hit that puts a stacking max health reduction, which you can dispel with a Disease Dispel if you have that available to you. Rigged Plague Borers also have a tank hit in Wretched Phlegm, which is just a big nature hit with a 65% poison slow you can dispel. And then it moves on to the second boss, Dr. Ickis, who has the Slime Injection debuff on the tank, which is an initial nature hit, as well as a pretty hard-hitting nature dot, which you can just magic dispel. From there, we just have the third boss, the Mina Venom Blade, who has Cytotoxic Slash, which is actually a big physical hit and nature damage taken increase, and you can just poison dispel this to get it off. Moving on, we have the Malignant Spawn in the Margrave Stradama encounter, which has the Touch of Slime ability, which is just that circle uh, in front of the ad that is a big nature hit to whoever soaks it, or if you don't soak it, an even bigger nature hit to the entire party. So you want to make sure just your tank is in that. You don't want anyone else to be in that because it's just unnecessary damage. Moving on to Mists of Tirna Scythe. The very first pack, if you do the little Night Phase skip, has the Drust Spike Claws in it, and they actually do put a Bloodletting, which is just a random jump and bleed on players and anyone within 4 yards of them, so just make sure you're a little bit spread on this pack, or using something like Ursul's uh, Binding Shot, uh, Ring of Frost, those kinds of abilities to prevent them from jumping on you. We then have the Turn Villager, as well as Drome and Ulfron, who have the Bewildering Pollen ability, which is just a frontal cone on the tank, again, dodgeable by everyone, including the tank, that disorients anyone hit. You want to make sure you're pointing that away from your group and that you're not standing in it as well. There's also Soul Split, which is a big tank buster in the first couple packs from the Drust Soul Cleavers, which is a big shadow damage hit that puts a stacking 20% damage taken increase on your tank, which is a magic debuff, so make sure you dispel that if you can. Uh, moving on to the Maze, there's the Miss Veil Defenders, which have the Frontal Cone Spear Flurry. Uh, it's channeled a series of small physical hits on the tank. But it is again dodgeable by everyone. See a lot of these cones, they will start on the tank, but will be dodgeable by everyone, including the tank. So just make sure you're not standing in these if you don't have to. Uh, from there, the three mini bosses in the maze all have various tank busters with the matriarch, that's the dragon, having shred armor, which is a big physical hit and stacking 20% damage taken increase. Then there's the Night Blossom, which has Triple Bite, which is three medium-sized nature damage hits and a stacking Poison Dot. And then finally, there's the Gorge Gullet, which has Tongue Lashing, which is just a line at the tank that can be dodged. You can actually outrange it and not take any damage. Finally, in this dungeon, we have uh, Mist Caller's Patty Cake, which is a big nature hit on the tank if you don't kick it, and only the tank can kick this. So... Only if you are the aggro target of Mistcaller are you able to kick this, so make sure tanks you are getting that interrupted. From there, we have the Theater of Pain, which uh, stands up to its name. Lots of pain. So we have, uh, in the first pack, the Unyielding Contenders have Vicious Strike, which is just a big physical hit on the tank. can get a bit more scary thanks to their Enrage effect, but uh, overall it's just a big physical hit, so be prepared for that. 
We then move into the first boss where Desia the Decapitator is by far the scariest boss in here. And it's because of a couple abilities, Mortal Strike and Slam, where Mortal Strike is just a medium physical hit on the tank, but it comes with a 30% healing reduction. And it's followed by Slam, which is a big physical hit on the tank. So you want to make sure you have some mitigation up for those hits. Moving down into Zav's wing, the ossified conscripts have Cruel Slash, which is a medium-sized physical hit on the tank. The problem is that there's normally a couple of these guys in the pack, so they kind of line up, and so you get hit by a couple medium hits. So you want to make sure you have mitigation up. Uh, we then have the mini bosses, where there's Savage Flurry, if you have Dokig the Brutalizer, and that's eight medium-sized physical hits over four seconds. So again, that's a, a four-second window where you want to have a decent size mitigation up or be ready to self heal those kinds of things uh heaven the breaker has a couple things he's got colossus smash on the tank a medium physical hit and a 50 percent damage taken increase and then he also has a cone and ground smash uh, also dodgeable and stuns you if you're hit by it then there's wreck the hardened which has unbalanced blow on your tank which is a big physical hit and a dodge parry and block reduction uh, and then there's zav the uh, second boss of the dungeon, which has both Brutal Combo, which is a small, a medium, and then a big physical hit on the tank. So three different hits uh, over the channel. Kind of similar to Dokeg, but it kind of ramps up over the duration. And then he has the Might of Maldrax's ability, where he'll rotate between three different abilities. Either Crushing Slam, which is a line attack, Massive Cleave, which is a frontal, uh, and then the just circle around him. So those are three that will randomize, and they will be targeted at random players as well, not just your tank. So just be ready to dodge in that face. Moving into the Necromancer wing, there's not too much. Uh, the main thing is Spirit Frost, which is from the Nefarious Dark Speakers. And this is just a medium frost on the tank that they'll just spam cast, uh, and it is interruptible. So you can just interrupt these to slightly reduce the damage your tank is taking in these Dark Speaker packs. But aside from that, the wing's not terribly scary for your tank. It's mostly uh, scary for everyone else with the random damage and curses going out. Moving into the Abomination section, there's the Putrid Butchers uh, in the first area, which have Devour Flesh, which is a big physical hit that heals them for 300% of damage done. And this can be pseudo-interrupted with various CC, and they will stop casting if you do that. So make sure you are using something like a Disorient, like a Stun, to prevent that from going off. There's also Vile Eruption from the Rancid Gas Bags. Those are the big guys. And that is uh, a cone targeted at a random player. But note that this cone is both out the front of the Rancid Gas Bag as well as the back. So it's actually a double-sided cone. Uh, and it will disorient you and do a huge amount of damage if you're hit. So make sure you're ready to move to the sides of the mob. Moving on, there is Gore Chop and his Hateful Strike. Just another big physical tank hit. Uh, and similarly, Mordretha has Reaping Scythe, which is a big half-physical, half-shadow hit on the tank. And uh, also to note for any of you warriors, it is fully spell-reflectable. Even the physical portion gets spell-reflected if you use that. So it's a nice little trick there. Aside from that, Mordretha just also has a Cone in Dark Devastation, which is targeted on a random player. And it kind of sweeps for a couple seconds while it's being channeled. And it is dodgeable. Um, by everyone of course, uh, but note if you do get caught of this it deals a decent amount of ticking shadow damage as well as knocks you back a fair amount So make sure you are avoiding that if possible Next up we have the other side where around the outer ring You have a couple things to be aware of starting with the risen bone soldiers in pretty much every pack uh, Where they have the bone strike ability. This is just a medium shadow damage hit on the tank Note that is shadow damage not physical and the, uh, the problem arises in the number of guys. So there tends to be, just like with the uh, ossified conscripts in the previous dungeon, there tends to be several of them in a pack. So you're dealing with several of these smaller shadow hits at the same time. So you just want to make sure you have something available for those. There's also the death speakers in a couple of the packs here, which chain cast a couple spells as well as having a frontal cone. Uh, a shadow core is the tank hit you want to try and kick if you can it's a fairly decent sized uh, shadow hit on your tank and it is interruptible so make sure you're kicking that and then there's erupting darkness which is just a cone on a random player and it's a huge knockback likely knocking you off the platform or just straight up killing you on higher fortified weeks which anyone can dodge so make sure you are moving out of the way uh, moving into a car's wing there's the death walkers which have gushing wound which is a stacking bleed uh, 
So you want to make sure you're kiting those uh, or just avoiding them when they start with their blade storm. You should be able to drop that bleed stack before they get too high. The car himself doesn't have major tank damage. It's just piercing barb, which is a medium physical and shadow hit on the tank. Not terribly dangerous though, so there's not too much to worry about there. And then we move into Mechagon, where the uh, the Arf Arf dog bot has uh, metallic jaws with a big physical hit on the tank, uh, and at the same time you're dealing with the headless clients which will just spam ch uh, cast discharge at your tank which are medium nature hits uh, and they are interruptible but there's multiple of them so you want to make sure you're kicking and that's what makes that uh, that combination of abilities makes that fairly dangerous for your tank so just be aware make sure you have something big for that uh, then it's just millhouse and maleficent themselves where millhouse will just spam frost bolts these actually hit quite hard so you want to make sure you're kicking all of these uh, and then you have Maleficent who has the Buzzsaw ability which will just stack up a bunch of bleeds on your tank which once they get to high stacks it hurts quite a bit so make sure if you have Shadow Fury available uh, from Millhouse not being dead you are using that to stun this boss and interrupt those bleed stacks. Uh, moving on we just have one thing in the Ardenwald area and that is uh, Mithresh the dragon guy. Not everyone pulls this but if you are pulling this just be aware of Talon Rake which is a fairly decent sized physical hit on your tank from there it's really just Musela who has soul crusher and this is actually a little bit different than the other abilities where it's a big physical hit on the tank and then it puts a shadow dot on the tank equal to the damage taken from the physical portion so if you use a big mitigation on the physical portion it'll actually reduce the dot damage and make this a lot less uh, painful to deal with so make sure you are doing that then we have Halls of Atonement, where there's not too much to worry about. In the very first pack, you've got the Depraved Dark Blades, which have a frontal cone on the tank in Deadly Thrust. Again, dodgeable by everyone. There's also the Vicious Gargans uh, nearby in this front area, which have the Jagged Swipe ability, which is just a small physical hit, but more importantly, it's a stacking bleed, uh, and it stacks up, and it hurts quite a bit, especially if these Gargans ever get enraged by the Houndmaster. So you want to make sure, it, it's likely that your tank will need to kite at some point in these packs just because of the nature of those bleeds, so just be ready to help them out. The Depraved Houndmasters in this area also have a Frontal Cone in Rapid Fire, which is just targeted towards a random player, making them leap towards them and then shoot a cone in their direction, so just make sure you avoid these. Throughout the dungeon, there's Obliterators, and there's also the mini boss Inquisitor Cigar, and they have the Wicked Bolt ability, which is a medium to large shadow hit, depending on who's using it, of course, on your tank, and it is interruptible. So if there's a bunch of tank damage going out, you can reduce it by kicking those Wicked Bolts. The first boss, Halkius, has Crumbling Slam, which is a big physical hit on the tank, and it cleaves anyone within six yards of them, so make sure you're away from them. It is actually dodgeable if your tank is moving. Though, just remember that that big fear circle will automatically fear anyone outside of it. Uh, so make sure you're not moving too much because it can just drag people out of that circle, which uh, is not good. So just be aware of that. Technically dodgeable, but you may not want to if it's going to result in players getting feared. From there, there's just the uh, Stoneborn Slashers up uh, near the second boss which are similar to the frog in that they have a frontal cone on the tank that is completely dodgeable if you just run away from it. Otherwise, it does follow you left and right. But if you run backwards, uh, you can actually dodge the initial hit. Uh, there's also a bolt of power on the high adjudicator, uh, which is similar to wicked bolt on the mini boss, just a large shadow hit on the tank that is interruptible. It's actually not the end of the world because this boss doesn't do much outside of that. But uh, if you can kick it, make sure you get it. Uh, Lord Chamberlain has a couple things to be aware of though. Stigma of Pride is a shadow dot on the tank that increases its damage by 30% every tick. There's six total ticks. So this dot ramps up and it ends up hurting quite a bit near the end of it. So you want to actually make sure you mitigate the end of this, uh, of this bleed, or not bleed, sorry, shadow dot if you can. Uh, and really not worry too much about the beginning ticks because they're they're light they're not too hard but as soon as you start getting to the last three or four ticks it starts ramping up quite quickly there's also unleash suffering which is a cone on a random player which deals a ton of shadow damage pretty much lethal uh, if you get hit by it and note that the cone animation for this it looks a lot shorter than it is this cone is actually uh, i i don't think it's infinite range but it's it's like really really long cone so make sure you are 
uh, moving out of the cone regardless of whether or not it looks like you're in that little red line. Next up, we have Spires of Ascension, uh, where there's also a few, uh, quite a few bleeds and, and tank hits in this, in this place. Uh, we'll start, though, with the Forsworn Vanguards near the front, which have Sweeping Blow, another frontal cone on the tank. I don't believe the tank can dodge this one, though, um, but everyone else can, so make sure you avoid that cone. We then have Kintara, who has Overhead Slash, which is now just a big physical hit on the tank. It's no longer a cone. It used to be, uh, but it was changed fairly early on in Shadowlands, so you don't need to worry about it cleaving friendly targets. It doesn't do that anymore, but it is still a fairly large physical hit that you want to have something up for every time. Uh, we then have the Stealth Claws, uh, which are the guys that are obviously in Stealth. Uh, and they have a couple things, so if they hit you from stealth, they will pounce, which is a fairly big physical hit and stun on the target. So you want to make sure you're trying to break those out. Uh, some popular things like mages can, can blink in an ice block to break it out. Hunters can run through and turtle. Obviously, they'll have flare and various traps to try and break them out of stealth. Uh, but you can also use kind of like a, an AoE ability like Thunderclap, like a, uh, Swipe or Thrash in the general area and break them out of stealth before they hit you. It's a little riskier. There's still a chance one or all hit you and stun you for a little bit, but just be aware that it is possible to break them out. And they also have Rake, which is just that stacking bleed they'll put on your tank. Another thing uh, that'll probably result in your tank kiting uh, in the middle or near the end of this pull, just so they don't take a massive amount of bleed damage. Moving on, there's the D Kyrian Dark Praetors, which have Dark Seeker, which is a medium arcane hit on the tank. Uninterruptible, so you can't really do anything about it, and it'll just kind of spam cast at your tank. So just be aware of that guy. Uh, he is just going to pump out a ton of magic damage onto your tank. There's also the Ether Divers. Uh, they have the stacking arcane dot in Insidious Venom. Another case of there's just a lot of these guys, even though the spell is interruptible. So... Despite this being not a huge initial hit on its own, in the numbers they come in, which can be as much as like six Ether Divers in a pack, uh, it is a little bit scary for your tank, so you want to make sure you're getting picks or CCs to kind of stagger those hits. We then have the Forsworn Squad Leader, which has the Crashing Strike Frontal Cone, again targeted at your tank. So common occurrences are almost all targeted at your tank. There's only a few that are targeted on random players. But uh, this will be targeted at your tank, and it is uh, avoidable by everyone. So make sure you're watching for that. We then have Eryphrian, the third boss, and he has Charge Stomp, which is a big arcane hit on the tank. That'll cleave anyone within 8 yards, similar to the Halkia Smash. So you want to make sure uh, there is kind of an overlap sometimes that happens where you'll drop the, uh, the puddles together. And then you'll move away and he'll stomp immediately after. So you want to make sure that your tank is always moving alone and everyone else is moving away from your tank just so they don't get cleaved by this smash. Uh, it also puts a little slow on you and a dot, but that's magic dispellable so you can get rid of that fairly easily. Then we move up to the mini bosses and uh, Lachesis has Diminuendo, which is a frontal cone on the tank. It has a very long range. It kind of spreads out into three lines. Uh, away from the tank so range you aren't safe if you're standing behind the tank either necessarily so just be aware of that and then we just have davos who has run through which is on a random player and she'll just charge in a line towards them and pass them even uh, so you want to make sure you just sidestep that from there we have necrotic wake uh, our second last dungeon uh, also has some pretty spooky trash in here for your tank Starting off, there's the Stitch Vanguards, and this is also true for the Loyal Creations later on, that have an ability called Bone Claw. It's just a big physical hit on your tank that you need to be aware of, uh, because there's normally just a lot of other small damage instances throughout those packs, uh, and those, those big hits are just something that you want to be prepared for. Uh, Blightbone himself in this first area also has Crunch, which is just another big physical hit on your tank, so just be aware of that. As well as a Frontal Cone and Heaving Wretch, which follows a random player, unavoidable by them, but dodgeable by everyone else. And then you have the uh, Sorcerers, Necromancers, uh, I believe the mini boss Narzuda has this, and then Amarth himself. They all have Necrotic Bolt, which is just a medium shadow hit on the tank, but it's also a heal absorb, so it's kind of a bit more damage than it seems just because of that absorb. Uh, but it is interruptible, so you can interrupt all of these, and you probably should be. It's not the end of the world if you miss these kicks, but it's just a nice little helpful thing you can do for your tank and healer 
There's also the Zolramis Bone Carvers in this area of the dungeon, which have the Bone Flay ability. I discussed this in my interrupt video, but it's a medium physical hit dot and 15% max HP reduction. And you can't kick this, but you can CC it to stop the cast, so stuns, disorients, those kind of things. And that'll definitely make your tank very happy. Uh, there's also the Skeletal Marauders, which have the Gruesome Cleave ability, which is a very big physical hit on your tank. Not avoidable by them, so you just need to stand still and eat that tanks. Um, but it will pretty much one-shot or nearly one-shot any DPS that get hit by it, so you want to make sure you are not in it. The other mini boss, the Skeletal Monstrosity, has another tank hit in Shatter, which you want to be aware of. It's just a big physical hit. Uh, normally, most groups don't pull this guy, but if you are, you can be aware of that. And then we go back to Amarth, who not only has those uh, bolts on the tank, he also has Necrotic Breath, which is similar to the uh, Theater of Pain last boss, which is a sweeping cone targeting a random player that you'll want to avoid. We then move up into the Necropolis, where the Kyrian Stitchwork, as well as the mini boss in Gore Grind, have the Tenderize ability, which is just a medium physical hit, but it puts a stacking 12% physical damage taken on the tank. So you want to be aware because that can get pretty dangerous later on uh, in the packs as that stacks up. Uh, as they also have a big ability called Mutilate, and that's also on Rot Spew, the other mini boss, and as well as uh, Stitch Fletch's uh, Abominations during the boss fight, which is just a big physical hit on the tank. But we actually do, uh, you can do a couple things. One, pets can taunt to eat a stack of Tenderize to allow them to drop off your tank. Uh, or two, you can have a DPS taunt and eat a Tenderize. You want to make sure that your tank taunts back after the Tenderize goes off so that they hit uh, they eat the mutilate because a tenderize likely won't kill a taunt dps especially if they use a defensive but a mutilate 100 percent will so you want to make sure that they're just eating a tenderized stack not the actual mutilate hit continuing with gore grind he also has a random target frontal cone in gut slice which deals pretty much lethal damage even on tyrannical weeks so you want to make sure you are sidestepping that also in this area, you have the Flesh Crafter, as well as both the Stitching and Separation Assistants, who have the Throw Cleaver ability. This is a line attack targeted at a random player that deals a big physical hit to just the first targeted impacts, whether that's enemy or ally, similar to the Meat Hook during the actual encounter itself. So you can kind of use this to your advantage to, to uh, cleave down mobs, or worst case, if you don't have anything, you can have your tank stand in front of this to eat the physical hit instead of the player themselves. They're much less likely to die from this. Uh, from the actual uh, separation assistant as well as the boss itself, there's the separate slash sever flesh ability, which deal a medium or big physical hit on the tank, uh, and it's just, just it's just another physical hit. So not much aside from that. Moving on to the last boss, we have Nalthor, who has the icy shard ability, which is just a spam physical hit, not frost. This is a physical hit on the tank, and again, this is just going to be spammed. Throughout the encounter, it's a ton of damage overall. You kind of need to mitigate constantly, rotating all your mitigation in this fight, especially on Tyrannical, because it really, really does hurt. As he'll he'll spam like three of these, do one of his abilities, like the uh, the Outcast ability or the uh, Roots ability or the uh, Puddle ability, and then he'll go back to spamming a bunch of these, do another ability, spam a bunch of these, and obviously not kickable. It's just a ton of physical damage going out on your tank, so just be ready to rotate cooldowns there. We have our last dungeon next, and that is Sanguine Depths. And we start early on with the animated weapons, which are spawned by the Noble Skirmishers. And these actually do Anima and Fuse Strike, which just makes all of their attacks shadow damage. So not physical, makes it a little bit harder to mitigate. Uh, and it's all medium-sized hits, so... And they summon a fair amount of stuff in this pack, right? So I think the first pack has a couple Skirmishers, maybe two or three if you pull those groups together at the beginning on top of that canister. And it ends up being quite a few animated weapons, and it's just a lot of damage going out on your tank, so just be aware of that. There's also the Regal Mist Dancers, which have Echoing Thrust, a frontal on your tank that is repeated in the previous positions each time it's cast. It is dodgeable by everyone, and your tank positioning here can pretty much make this a lot easier or a lot harder for the rest of your group to dodge. Uh, as if you, for example, you kind of skirt along the walls, sidestep along the walls your party pretty much never has to dodge any of these cones uh, it's kind of hard to go back onto the exact same spot here just because the tra there's traps that get thrown out and kind of um, reduce the uh, area you have to work with 
So that's not always an option, but it's pretty much always an option to make these pointed off towards no one. So make sure you are doing that if you can. The Insatiable Brutes before the first boss also have a big physical hit. In Slam, not much to talk about there. The big hit. The cast is much less now after the nerf, so it's a little less scary, but it's still a fairly sizable hit. And then we have Crixus himself, which has the Vicious Headbutt, which is both a big physical hit and knockback, so make sure you aren't getting shot off the edge of this platform. Moving on, we have probably the scariest mob in the entire dungeon for tanks in the Chamber Sentinels, which have the Frontal Cleave in Severing Slice. Similar to the Skeletal Marauders in Necrotic Wake, this is not, uh, it is fixated on your tank, so it's not avoidable by them, and it'll pretty much murder anyone else that gets hit by it because it puts a pretty big bleed on uh, everyone hit. Now the, the scary portion of this is actually the bleed, not really the initial hit. That bleed really, really hurts, so you want to make sure you have something, uh, and hopefully you're able to DPS them down so you only get one bleed on your tank. We then have the mini boss, Head Custodian Javelin, which has the sweeping slash line attack, which is on a random player. It shoots a tornado at them and it deals a bit of physical damage as well as knocks them back. So you want to make sure you're dodging that if you're pulling the custodian. Moving on into that inner circle, we have the Depth Warden, which has Crushing Strike, another big physical hit on your tank, as well as the Frenzied Ghouls, which have Shadow Claws, which are a big shadow hit on your tank. And the scare here with the ghouls is that just like some of the other mobs, there's tend to be quite a few of them in a pack. I believe there's one that has a single, uh, but there are a couple that have like three to four in a pack. So that's a bit scary for your tank. You want a big damage reduction there to deal with those shadow hits. We then move on to Grand Proctor Brelia, who has the Iron Spikes ability. And that just deals four big size physical hits on the tank over the duration of two seconds. So this is another situation where you're getting a large number of hits in a short time frame so you want to make sure you have some form of mitigation. We then move on to the little gauntlet area before the last boss where the sanguine cadets have the pierce ability, a medium physical hit on the tank but again tends to be a lot of them in a pack. I think there's even a pack with like six of them. So big big uh, number of smaller hits here it can be quite scary for your tank just be aware of that. Finally, we have General Call, which has the Wicked Gash ability, and this is just the general bleed from uh, from this boss, only removed by using the Shining uh, Barrier here, the extra action button from the Naru, and that'll remove all of your bleeds on anyone in the party here, so make sure you are using that to your advantage. But that just about wraps up this video, guys. Remember, if you found it useful, please make sure to like and subscribe to support this channel. It really does help. In terms of my future videos, I'll soon be putting out the start of my KSM series where I pug my way to Keystone Master as the lowest represented tank, Protection Warrior. I'll also be streaming those keys on my Twitch, at Tactics, alongside some of my higher Guardian keys, so come check it out if you're interested. That is it for me and this video though, thank you all so much for watching, I will see you all in the next video.